Welcome to the Angler Talk Podcast with Chris and Aaron. Brought to you by FishingMagicianTV.com. What is up, everybody? It's Chris back again with another weekly episode of Angler Talk. And man, oh man, the fishing is still on fire here in Jersey. The striped bass are still running so hard. Man, they are catching them from everywhere, from up here in Elizabeth, New Jersey, down in the ports. I have a buddy who's been going out every day catching them all the way down to Atlantic City area and further on. These fish are everywhere being caught on everything, pretty much. Get out there and bend some rods. But as we get closer to December, you guys know my favorite season is upon us. And I have a guest this week by the name of Eddie Godell, the owner and operator of Toggy Time Jigs. And he's going to teach us some stuff about using the jig. And I hope you guys learn something from this and get out there and go use it. So enjoy. And here I am with Eddie Godell, the founder of Toggy Time Jigs. How are we going, brother? What's up, man? How you doing? Thanks for having me. I can't complain, man. Just, you know, one of those cold Jersey days. It's only going to get colder from here on out. But, That's right. You know, Three days ago, it was 75 degrees, man. Now it's 35 <laughs> degrees and 30 knots. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's good old Jersey I for that. I hear that, man. But the good thing about this time going into next month is, uh, I believe, our favorite season of them all. Which That's is it, the- man. That's that. That's what I'm here for, man. That's my passion. That's everything I live for is uh, blackfish, especially jigging blackfish. So Yeah, the the blackfish, the tau tog, the tog. It's kind of like it, it used to have like its, its own coat following. You know, it wasn't. <laughs> I one believe of, it. Yeah, it it wasn't one of those species that was sought out by so many people, and you know, over the years, it's getting it's getting to be a bigger uh, fishery for sure. It's something that has gotten more popularity, and you know, even guys like me who stick to you know the good old snafu rig that's never really let anybody down. It's old trusty, but the jigging over the past few years has blazed onto the scene and you know it's you make one hell of a jig i mean if you want to <laughs> talk if you want to talk about matching the hatch to yeah. perfection ed, ed you, you hit the nail on the head without a question man thanks brother yeah so um pretty much you know i i uh you know i've been black i mean i'm 38 years old i've been black fishing since i was you know i don't want to say in diapers but <laughs> Uh, my uncle, you know, which of course, you know, Joe with tuna tails with the high mar had me on and, you know, you, for how many years, man, it was always the traditional, we always call them the pool stick rods or the four yeah. row jig masters, um, 80 pound mono, 80 pound fluoro. If you had it at the time, there was no such thing as braid. And, mm-hmm. you know, you were literally, you know, I had to work at, at the end of the day, cause these things are what, 10 pounds, even yeah. before lead, you know? So that's how I was brought up. And then, you know, just always being a person that uh, always wanted to ask people questions, always like, hey, I struck out today, but this guy in the back of the boat caught 10 fish. What did he do? So you start asking questions. And my my, my thing is you, you learn something new every day, especially fishing, yes. no matter how much you think you're great at it or you think you're good at it or you think you're sucky at it. You yep. know, you always want to ask questions. And that's my biggest knowledge I can give. So. Next thing you know, all of a sudden, these guys with with spinning tackle came on the boats, and I'm like, well, well you know, what are they gonna catch? <laughs> look at this, look at this guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, they put this little weight on, and then bam, 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 and then it's like, even the guys that start mugging them on traditional tackle, they're not catching them. So what happened? And then my, uh, I would say at least the last five years, you definitely saw a development in um, the jig fishing for blackfish. And yeah. I got immediately hooked. It took at least a year. I would say maybe 2017, 2018. It took me at least a year to get rid of that pool stick rod, the 80 pound braid to try to go down to a four row spinning reel with a <laughs> seven foot rod. That's 10 to 20 pound test or 10 to 20 pound rating with a two ounce shig. And you're telling me I'm going to catch an 80 pound blackfish. I would have threw yet. <laughs> I would have thought you were nuts, you know, exactly. But, and, uh, you know, and then once I got that first piggy on it and it changed my life and, uh, you know, actually, I, I should say it changed my fishing life, how I look at it. And then I started to, you know, go to the tackle shops. Of course, I'm always the biggest supporter of local tackle shops and the jigs that were out there, man, in my opinion, I was just paying top dollar for something I wasn't happy with. You know, you either yeah. had 
the guys with, you know, sell five or six jigs that had caked over eyes in them or the paint was dripping or these crazy colors that to me never matched the crab or never matched the bottom. Uh, right. And I just said, there's got to be somebody out there that made a better quality jig for the same price or cheaper. And I didn't find them. So lo and behold, man, three years ago, Taki Time Jig started and it took off to a place that I, I, I can't be more than thankful for all my customers, man. Absolutely, man. And, you know, yeah. you said you said it. There are a lot of guys who make jigs out there, you know, but they're just they're throwing something in a package that is not always great. And not all of them, because I'm not going to downplay anybody. And, you know, but there are some people who just grab a jig, slap some paint on it, and that's it. And they think that that's it. But for you, you're actually matching a lot of the structures that these fish are living in, a lot of the things that they eat. Yeah, my absolutely. favorite. I'm sorry, Chris. Go ahead, buddy. Uh, my my favorite, my absolute favorite color pattern that you got uh, right now is that lobster color pattern. Yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, well, that <laughs> yeah, that's uh, set. That's seven layers of powder coating, buddy. On that one alone, so I mean, um, that is yeah, absolute that, perfection. Yeah, that um, yeah. So uh, and again, man, it was the same thing of just like. You know, when I started it, my buddy, um, the big guy, uh, was actually I'm fishing with tomorrow at Stri um, on Instagram at Striker Fishing. We started it, man, as just like, hey, listen, you know, it was a traditional do it mold, your must add hooks, um, and we're like, you know what, let let me start doing this. And and the main reason I did, it, like I said, I wasn't happy what was in the tackle shops, but it was also too is I didn't like the colors. That was my biggest thing. I wasn't yeah. so big into hooks at that standpoint, um, but I was into the colors, and I'm like. You know, you bring up a piece or you get snagged and you bring up a piece of structure. Like, that's what these fish are in. You know, they're eating, excuse me, green crabs. Um, they're eating mussels. They're eating blue crabs. They're eating white leggers. Why yeah, aren't there yeah. jigs out there that are matching what they eat? And even, even if you put a, a, a blue claw crab jig down, it might glow to see it a little bit in 70 feet of water. But you mm -hmm. put a green crab on they're still eating what they eat, you know, or, or they're matching, like, you know, you're matching the paint of, all right, maybe they're a little, uh, they're not fully committed that day. All right. So put on a color that matches the bottom, you know, the yeah. hard bottom color, the ghost color, um, you know, anything like that, or you're, you know, fish in a wreck, 80 feet of water, you know, these fish, when I'm filleting these fish, they're, they're spitting out little lobsters. Well, yeah. let me make a lobster color, you know, Absolutely. and that's a trial and error. And there you go. And now, seven layers of powder coat i think it takes me about four minutes to make each and every jig and there's two packs per jig for the lobster color i mean i yeah. i there's i go through a lot of beers with with that color man but yeah i honestly i caught my personal best piggy on a once a one and a half ounce um lobster delicious color on waterproof two years ago so uh that's it awesome. works so yeah man that's awesome man but what what the the main thing that i absolutely love about your jigs the most and you don't only make um blackfish jigs you also sent me some of these uh fluke ball jigs that you're making yeah. and what i love about your jigs the most now i i do a lot of behind the scenes thing that i don't tell people about i literally sat in my yard throwing jigs at a rock and i'm just like how much paint is <laughs> on this jig because it's yeah. not chipping yeah. And the durability of your jig is what I what I love the absolute most. And you know, besides the fact that it gets the job done, because I have caught fluke all over all over your jigs, and they do a phenomenal job. You know, SNS Bucktails has been out there; they do a great job too. But you're right there with them. You know, you're making a a full quality product that is going to last people a very very long time. And like, let's just start off with what is your process of making the jig and what makes it so great sure well uh, chris i appreciate that buddy so one of the biggest things with me is i am fortunate enough that i have a full-time job that um you know for the past 12 years i've been putting in 60 plus hours a week so i am you know i don't want to say paycheck to paycheck but i am financially stable where uh, you know i can support my family so the whole mm -hmm. blackfish jigging thing it wasn't for money it's not for to make an income. It's not for whatever. Yeah, it's extra money, which is great. It was my passion. And like I said, mm -hmm. when I started, it was because what was in the tackle shops at the time three years ago, I I didn't like. I didn't like and I hated spending money on it. And don't go don't get me wrong, man. I can go spend, you know, twenty five dollars on a four pack of some craft IPA and you know, yeah. pull money like you wouldn't believe, but I was just so unhappy with that being my passion that that's what I'm paying for. So 
you know, I started, like I said, doing that and it wasn't for money. But to this day, I, I have my friends, I have my, you know, family that are fishermen that truly support me and they love the product. But I can honestly say that each and every jig is the lead is poured by me, which is I, I am very happy with my lead owner. Um, he it's 99 percent pure lead. When I burn this stuff, it barely smokes. There's barely any waste. It's as pure quality as possible. So when you pour that onto a hook, it's nothing but the best binder possible. So you don't have any wiggle. You don't have any um, uh, uh, give whatsoever. So that's that's one of my main things. On top of that, once I started getting developed, I was actually fortunate enough to meet a guy that makes his own jet, uh, makes his own hooks. And mm -hmm. that's what I pride myself on, man. I mean, there's a lot of things that go with it, but... Uh, my hooks, I am the only person that guarantees their blackfish hooks. And you look at, you know, some people look at that, well, you know, what are you crazy? Like, no, yeah. like I stand by my hooks. They're not must add. They're not owner. They're not gummies. And again, there's nothing wrong with them because I use some of those guys for my assist hooks, which we'll get to you later. But mm -hmm. as far as the hook on the jig, like I am so happy with the development that this guy did to the molds I gave them. So pretty much if you are fighting a fish and my hook breaks, I will not only refund your money, but I will give you your money back. And in the three years I've been in business, granted, my hook development has changed, but it's the same guy. I never had one 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 hook failure in three years. And I pride mm. myself on that. More than money, more than sales, more than tackle shops. Like that is something that I know nobody else can stand on. And I Absolutely. do. Absolutely. And, uh, uh, you know, just to back you up, uh, one time I went out with Captain Bobby on the Ocean Explorer. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I just want to do a, a quick trip, nothing crazy. And we get out to this piece of structure, and I'm using one of your jigs. I was actually using the black and green one. And okay, yeah, the Glow Asian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'll never forget, man, I felt the scratch. But, you know, it's y your initial reaction is swing, you know. So I swing, <laughs> and I miss so hard, but I got stuck in the structure. Yeah. So I'm sitting there and I'm popping, and I'm popping, and I'm popping, and this thing doesn't want to doesn't want to come out. You know, it's hooked yeah. really, really good. So after about a minute and a half, minute forty five seconds, the thing finally comes out, and those hooks are so strong, I literally brought up a piece of structure with me. You know, <laughs> yeah. when, when it when it comes to the jigging game. For blackfish, at least, I'm still, I, I guess, what you can say, novice or a rookie or whatever. But I mean, just what you just said about those hooks, it, I can back that up. That that's a fact. You know, these things are tough and still sharp as a nail. Yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, like I said, man, these guys that, um, you know, they 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 produce everything. Listen, they got to feed their families, man. I, I don't, I'll never talk bad about them, and um, you know, I understand what they got to do and. You know, they might have to get stuff from overseas and this and that because they got to they got to feed their families. And I respect that 100 percent. Like I said, I'm fortunate enough that I have a full time gig that I put in my hours. And, you know, when I have two hours to myself, I grab a beer, go down the garage and, you know, I make these each one by hand, package each one, market each one. Everything is by me. Um, you know, and again, uh, on the flip side of that, man, if I lost my job and I had to sell these things for a living, I'd probably be cutting corners too. And I'd probably be saving cents and doing this and doing that to feed my family. Yeah. So I don't blame these guys, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, I, I don't, I'm sorry, man. I, I don't trust a potential pig of a lifetime on a, on an eight cent jig or an eight cent hook when you're yeah. buying 10,000, 10,000 of them at a clip, when you break it down to that, you, you know? Absolutely. So, and because I that agree. was my experience, that was my experience with some of these hooks where it's just like, Oh my God, this thing's pulling rip and drag all of a sudden pop. Like, Oh my God, did it might not break. Oh no, you bring it up and the hook is bent in half or the hook broke or, you know, the jig broke, twisted in half. It's like, what the hell am I paying for? You know? Exactly. So, um, but then that's when the match the hatch came in, man, where it's like, it was, it was more, all right, I got the hooks. Now let me get the molds that I want. And again, there was nothing wrong with the do it molds, but I love the shorter shank hook, but I didn't feel like it was enough hook for the crab, especially coming like December, January, where you start fishing those big white leggers. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted something all around. Uh, so I, you know, sent out my mold CNC shop. They came back and, and again, I took those molds. I went to my hook guy, make this work. So yeah. these guys asked me, do you, you know, do you use three Oh, four Oh, five Oh, six Oh. I said, I'll be honest with you, man. I get boxes of 10,000 hooks at a clip from my guy that says, this is going to fit your three, uh, three quarters. This is going to fit your one ounce. This is going to fit your one and a half. There you go. Degrees, and that's it. So I don't know what they do. All I know is they, they work, <laughs> you know, Absolutely, so man. I couldn't tell you, uh, you know, an odd or anything like that, but that's, uh, 
you know, like I said, man, I, um, I'm very happy where the company's going. I never expected three years ago I would be here, you know, sitting here talking to you and, you know, trying to keep up with Tackle Shop's orders, man. Hey, but hey, that's that's the best part is just yeah. when we when we see these dreams and we actually start to pursue it, yeah, we man. never know where it's going to go. And let me tell you something, my friend. You just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> you're going to be the king of, of the tog jigs. I yeah, can man, like, like I that. said, man, let everybody, hey, they want to do the striper fish and they want to do the fluke. And I mean, even though, like I said, man, I'm slowly getting into fluke and stuff, but I'm not going to put anything out there until uh, like same thing with the tog jigs, man, until I can back my whole heart in it. And be absolutely mine. And I'll be honest with you, man. Guys have been asking for my fluke balls and fluke jigs. And I'm, I have no problems, like, you know, with the DM messages on Instagram. I just don't have the time, man. Like, honestly, even in the even in the summer, <laughs> even in the spring after the April season, I am so busy trying to make these and mold these. Because, like I said, everyone is me. Just to keep up for the fall and the winter that, you know, I finally, I want two weeks to myself that I got to join my family. That I don't got to worry about pouring lead or, 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 um, you know, mixing the paint right and curing the paint. It's just like, you know, I'm not saying I won't do it in the future. Never say never, man. I'm not saying that, that Taki time won't do the fluke ball full time, but yeah. right now, man, it's just kind of like, yeah, let me mess around with this. And of course messing around with it. Everybody's like, Oh, it doesn't chip. It doesn't break. The eyes don't fall off. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Great problem to have. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, I feel I yeah, feel really yeah, special that yeah. I got a full Plano box full of them. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I yeah, I man. did I, I didn't catch any doormats this year, but uh, my biggest was an eight and a eight and a quarter pound uh, Nothing fluke. Nothing wrong with that, brother. Nothing wrong with and, that. And uh, I can't lie, man. That 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 Tagi time fluke ball with the six inch grub from from yeah. Gulp that did its thing yeah. for sure. Yeah, man. I, I love using that chicken rig, and I like to use, you know, as, as opposed to the sinker, like conventional people do, I like to use a bucktail or a ball jig as my weight and head it down there, yeah. and that, that was definitely the sauce for that day. But um, I know you got a few jigs in front of, in front of you, so why don't you show us uh, what you got there and, yeah, you know, man. the colors and everything. Yeah, so honestly, one of my biggest thing, guys, is, um, you know, a lot of guys, they have bait casters and stuff like that, which, again... You use them, you like them, go for them. How I fish, man, is I'll use anywhere from like a 3.0 to 4.0 spinning reel. Um, and my rods that I use, I mean, I use custom. I make them my own. Um, they're Rod Geeks Carbon 4 style. They're anywhere from the 10 to 20-pound uh, class or 16 to 30 for the heavier. Uh, you can go on Rod Geeks website. And uh, by the way, guys, anything other than my jigs, I don't – I'm not endorsed by anybody. I'm not, I'm not, I don't swear by anybody. I'm just, I'm an average fisherman, just like anybody else. I just do this on the side. So anything that I show you guys, it's just other than the jig is mm -hmm. all I bought myself. I'm not endorsed by anybody. So with that being yeah. said, guys, um, the, one of the things is, like I said, I use anywhere from a three to four Oh reel. Uh, I, I don't want to say if I had the curse, but I had the luxury of fishing, uh, fishing a, um, uh, VR 50, uh, Van Stahl mm. last year. Uh, with that yeah. being said, I now have three of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just, it's stupid, man. Uh, other than that, I always had, um, twin powers reels, uh, 4,000 SW 4,000s. I had the, um, die with salt is 3,000, 4,000, nothing wrong with those reels, beautiful reels. And honestly, guys, you just want to get into black fishing. There's nothing wrong with a Daiwa. Uh, big game, three thousand, four thousand. I think those reels are anywhere from like ninety nine bucks to like one hundred and ten dollars online. Nothing wrong with those reels. They got plenty of uh, torque to them, plenty of power. Um, mm -hmm. Rods, guys. I, and again, I, I really don't do business them, but I know they just put them out there. I think Jigging World. I think they have a hundred dollars set up for like one of their seven foot jigging rods, guys. So yes, you want to talk do. about you want to talk about all in two hundred bucks, not including line for a jigging setup. I mean, you you, you just, just 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 worth trying. Two hundred bucks all in, you can't beat that, you know. And exactly. like I said, it's it's just from what I've seen. But um, uh, like I said, with that, I Van Stall and I use um the Rod Geeks Carbon Four that I make myself. I make my own rods. Um, but with that all in, I use anywhere from twenty to thirty pound braid. Um, I use nothing more than that. Uh, the reason why that is I, it braid is, has plenty of power plus two. I want to get that. I want to get that jig all the way down to the bottom that I use anywhere from, you know, tomorrow fishing, which is, you know, the second day of opening uh, day all the way till mid January when you're fishing 120 feet of water, obviously depending on the current, mm -hmm. um, with that, I am huge, huge on 
this as the leader. So it's a Seaguar Inshore. Um, this I was a little skeptical of because I always use the Seaguar brand. But when they came out, I believe it was last year, the year before with the Inshore model, it was literally half as expensive for twice as much line. So I was very skeptical on that, it, 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 you know, especially coming with this kind of uh, brand. But yeah. I cannot say any more high, um, uh, better things about this. Again, this is the Seaguar Inshore. This is the 40. This is my go-to. So whether it's 20-pound braid to 40-pound Seaguar or 30-pound to 40, this is my go-to. Um, again, knowing when I'm fishing with certain captains, I mean, you want to talk about any traditional hard bottom, uh, rock piles, you know, long branch area. I mean, I'm from Belmar, so anywhere, long branch area, Asbury Park, Red Church area, um, anything like that uh, where everybody's fishing, rock piles, this is perfectly fine. Um, mm. You start fishing um, with somebody like, you know, Mark de Blasio on Waterproof, which we're fortunate enough to, you know, pretty much every Thursday we have booked with him in December. He nice. fishes the, the True Rex. You, you want to talk about, you know, you, you got a chance of a fish of a lifetime. That, again, same thing, 20, 30 pound braid, but I changed it up to 50, 60 pound of the same thing with the Seaguar Inshore because, you know, you might hook that fish and 20 feet up, you might hit a piece of the structure. So you yeah. want to make sure that you have plenty of, um, mm. you, you know, penny, uh, plenty of um, uh, give with that. Um, also, too, guys, is one of the things, because I'm always a fisherman first, so I see a lot of different versions of assist hooks. Now, um, a lot of guys fish just strictly jig, which of course is fine. Uh, a lot of guys say, oh, you know, color doesn't make a difference. Listen, again, for what I do for a living, for the amount of hours I put into my regular job, I wouldn't make seven color jigs if <laughs> seven color jigs didn't work. Yeah. Um, if it was just one color and that was it. Uh, and I say that because there's times I'll be on any boat, whether it be a head boat, charter boat whatever next thing you know all right you drop down a certain color jig whatever bam 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 you get whacked bam 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 bam, bam. you pick up three four fish okay obviously use the same jig new bait you send it right down 90 sometimes you'll get not even a scratch not even a lick nothing well yeah. what changed a lot of guys will say oh well uh you know we we picked every fish out of that hole not me <laughs> what i'll do is i'll pick up that i'll pick up that uh rig i'll have another rod ready to go different color new bait, send it down. By the time I flip that bail, 90% of the time I get whacked. So oh, what changed nice. other than the jig color? So, mm -hmm. you know, I, and I always stand by that, that that's why, in my opinion, in my experience, that's why it makes a difference. Um, yep. But with that, uh, what I was saying about the assist hook. So a lot of guys, this is my little, so this is um, my green crab color. Um, a lot of guys, and I think there's a couple guys out there that make them. And again, however you guys sell them, whatever, that's fine. So they'll have the hook. And then they'll tie, picture another hook here, with another leader that goes about here. So if that makes sense. The mm -hmm. problem with this is what I always say is that you'll catch fish on this. Don't get me wrong. You'll catch your 14, your 15, your 16, even your 17-inch fish. You catch a fish over five, six pounds on this that's pulling on this. Where is this line at? This yeah. line is right against this hook. And what do you have? You have a crab on here. So you're mm -hmm. naturally having a prey right here so you have a pop and where does it pop right here so they'll bring up this jig and about that much a line oh what happened well that's <laughs> what happened you know so we like to fish which we've been very successful so if you guys can picture this so literally take your leader throw it through a 3-0 4-0 5-0 octopus sickle whatever sell you whatever kind of hook you like mm -hmm. tie it directly to the jig so i use a clinch knot use a uh, uni knot use a polymer knot whatever mm -hmm. like you knot you want to put a little super glue on it guys do <laughs> and look at that hook so that literally mm -hmm. sits just like that on the bottom right so this slides mm -hmm. it never gets caught up so literally it's sitting on the bottom you put a half of crab here half a crab here and look at that you can't get yeah. any more natural than that that so, looks awesome man yeah that's that's how we fish and um um but again, with this, especially if you're fishing the assist, I highly recommend minimum of 40 pound uh, fluoro, or even if you use mono with this, because not that you're going to catch a 40 pound blackfish, but the amount of breaking strength, when you have a pig that pulls down on this, you mm. want to make sure you got yourself a good knot and a, and a good fluoro that can withstand that breaking strength. Fish yes. were caught up to 14 pounds this past year, just on this alone. 
So I know they work. It's just having this not cinched. Um, so one of the things I do to um, have that not cinched, these guys I actually found through uh, Gabriel's uh, tackle down in brick. They're actually called, I don't know if you could see them, but knot pullers. Um, mm -hmm. They are phenomenal. Um, they are great for tying your braid, um, tying, you know, braid to fluoro or, or okay. fluoro to your top shot. They also, too, have like a little hole for your hook. So you, when you cinch that down, you can really pull it tight so you know it's not coming undone. Um, other than that, so guys ask, um, you know, with the assist hook, a lot of guys are confused on size, the braid, whatever. I use anywhere from 3.0 to 5.0 octopus assist hooks. The biggest thing with the assist hook, guys, isn't the size of the aught, like 3.0, 5.0, It's the diameter of the opening of the eye. So this yeah. is a, right here, so this is a Eagle Claw uh, trocar hook. This is a 5.0. And again, guys, this is 40 pound. Um, and you can see the amount of movement, like that eye has so much movement. I could probably put 80 pound fluoro in there and you won't have a problem with it moving. Um, and again, there's hooks that are other five O's that don't have the same as much on. eye in it. So you get caught up. So a lot of times if you <clears> cast out this eye, will get all the way stuck up here. Then you catch your dogfish or whatever that happens when that happens, yeah. either change the assist, take the assist off or try a hook that has a, hot, a bigger diameter eye. Um, so like I said, we use um, the Eagle Claw car. These are the um, Pro V Octopus, which is almost like a sickle type. We are very big on these. Um, these are actually new that I saw. So these are the Tsunami Salt X. Mm. Uh, these are very good hooks. Uh, again, 4050 Octopus. And also, too, you always have your owner. Um, the cutting points again, three Oh, four Oh, five Oh. We also use gummies too guys, but honestly, I ran out of gummies on my last trip in Rhode Island. Hmm. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it guys. I mean, I always say kiss, you know, keep it simple, stupid. Um, you know, I always say a lot of guys use like the, the clips and these like little, uh, almost look like paperclip things. Hey, yeah. if you're, if you're confident with that, go for it. But to me, the most minimalist design, the most natural looking bait, the most natural looking jig you produce every time and Absolutely. I knock on wood. That's what I've been going by. And I, th that's why I'm here, buddy. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I hear that brother. Now you did say you just came back from Rhode Island and a couple yeah. of weeks ago on the show, we had the uh, the privilege to talk to captain Coral Aiello. She's okay. a captain yeah. out of Rhode Island, uh, Sarah star charters. And man, that when it comes to tog, that is the land of the giants. How'd you do up there? We did great. Um, there was no, I mean, we had fish up to nine pounds caught. I caught one about nine. Um, but again, same thing up there, like down here, the water was a little too warm. So I, I mm -hmm. the captains that I fish with up there are saying now that now the true pigs are coming in. But just the fishery alone, man. I mean, I have never, like, it literally almost feels like freshwater fishing for like drop shotting smallmouth in like 30 feet of water. <laughs> like, yeah. it really is crazy, man. Like, you're literally... Um, we went on, uh, the first day we went up there, we went on bounty hunter charters, great operation. Um, we went, you took a, like about an hour ride, but when I say an hour ride, you're either going North or South and you're literally fishing a couple hundred yards off the beach. It, I mean, yes. it's almost, it almost feels like if anybody's been to Lake George in New York and you actually been on the water where all these rock faces and these cliffs and these mountains, and you're mm -hmm. like so close to it, it literally feels like that. And you're catching beautiful fish, like saltwater. Yeah. Like it's it's for here in Jersey, it's like that doesn't make sense. You know, you can't exactly. people don't wrap their brains around it, you know. Um, yeah. but I love um just the quantity and the quality of the fish and I um, mean oh, yes. just studs and but I but I absolutely love and again, I know it's the fishery up there, but I absolutely love their quota. Now I don't think that their quota would work in Jersey just because of the 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 biomass of the fish, but they literally have same thing, five fish limit, but they're at 16 inches and they're only allowed one fish over 21. Oh, so wow, that's good. you get, yeah. So you get your trophy fish. Most people release it. Like I said, that nine pounder, I caught an, I caught a nice picture of it. 
uh, and threw him right back. I mean, you know, he, he didn't even hit the deck. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> a lot of guys up there that I, that I, you know, fish with, they believe all in the same stuff. Cause again, you know, here you catch a keeper fish, 15 inches, nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that, but you're yeah. getting minimal meat. The difference That's between a 15 and 16 inch fish, just in meat quality alone, you know, when you catch a 16 inch fish, you're getting a decent amount of meat. You know, Absolutely. so up there, so these guys, they catch three, four, 16, 17, 18 inch fish. They're good. They catch their trophy, even though they can legally keep it. Most of these guys are letting it go, you know? Yeah. So it's just, uh, the, 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 the captains are great. The, the, the structure is, I, I think maybe in two days fishing there, the second day we went on bounty hunter, um, mm -hmm. charters, I think maybe between me and, like I said, the, my buddy, uh, striker fishing on Instagram, we might've lost three jigs in two days maybe wow. and that's you know that's maybe awesome. if we got stuck maybe two or three little pops and they came out so you're not fishing crazy stuff and you're catching these quality fish it's insane it really is i recommend mm -hmm. anybody that has a chance go um yes. we went in um bounty hunter was in the newport uh rhode island area first time there mm -hmm. anybody that has you know a wife or a significant other it was just an awesome town bunch of like little breweries and bistros and uh, uh beautiful restaurants and wine bars and you know meanwhile me and him we're half in the bag coming off the boat we're like all right let's go you know what I mean? yeah. uh you know because we were enjoying that. our vacation too you know so uh but no it's an awesome time awesome town uh we're definitely going back next year if the only my only regret was not probably staying another day or two that's how beautiful it was up there Yes. I mean, I got the opportunity to go up to uh, Rhode Island a few years ago in 2018. I went with my buddy Jose and, um, okay. you know, um, the weatherman is, seems like they are the fishermen's worst, worst enemy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you're telling you, oh yeah, the storm is not going to hit this area, but you know, we get there and we're, we're, we're getting pumped up and then we're crossing New York and we're just like, uh Oh, this doesn't look good. Yeah. So we're like, man, we're on the way. We're not going to stop. So we yeah. get there and the fishing wasn't lights out, but I mean, we're not catching monsters, but we are catching 15 to 18 inch fish. And yeah. it's just the abundance of those fish up there. And like you said, we're literally fishing a hundred, maybe 90 yards off the beach crazy and we're banging yeah. up fish left and right and yeah. these are one of the most delectable delectable fish you can possibly eat i mean they are a reflection of their their, their diet they're eating crabs they're eating shrimp they're eating mussels that's I why mean, they taste delicious man <laughs> they're gonna taste really really good and to piggyback on what you said a little while ago when you catch these big girls I mean, because of the respect that me me and you and other guys who love tog fishing have for these fish, you got to understand, guys, for the people that don't know, a black fish, a.k.a. a tau tog, it only grows a half inch every, what, yeah. two years, two and a half something, years? Something crazy, yeah. yeah. So w when you catch anything 10 pound plus, I mean, especially like Dustin, when he caught that, that 22 pounder, you know. You got to understand, this is probably a 90-year-old fish, you yeah. know? And so you yeah. got to respect that, and you want to sustain the species and let these big girls grow because these are the breeders. These are what are giving the future generation for us to keep eating these fish. And, you know, for me, black fishing is my favorite, not only because of the way that it tastes, but it's it's probably the most humbling and the most rewarding fish to catch, at least in our waters and in the entire Northeast, because like we've spoken about structure, you know, these fish, first off, they have these big old rubber lips that you have to wait for them to protrude their mouth out and bite it. And then you got to swing, yank them out of the structure and pull them up. And, you know, it does take some type of skill. I am not the greatest at it, but I will still go. I remember the first time I went black fishing, I was lucky enough to have a teacher by the name of Jerry Pastorino. And we all know who the fishmonger yeah. is. And, yeah, 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 yeah. and you know what I'm saying? I lost a lot of gear. But I also learned a hell of a lot that day. Yep. You know, this is, like I said, one of the most humbling fish you can possibly catch. And, you know, I finally got my first double digit right before I moved to Florida to go down there to work. And that was probably, besides the day I met my fiance, because I'm not trying to sleep in the doghouse, it's probably the best <laughs> day of my life. You know what I'm saying? That was definitely for me, man. But what is, what is your personal best blackfish? My personal was 12. Um, yeah, they, I had other guys on the boat with me. Of course I saw a bigger, mine personal is 12. I saw, a um, say probably another handful over 10 easy. Um, uh, but like I said, anything eight, nine pounds, man, I do this for a passion. I, I, I let yeah. these girls go, 
You know what I mean? I, now, don't get me wrong, man. I, you know, if I get one that's, you know, you're talking about 20 plus, or you're talking about a state record, then, hey, I'll take the bashing and we'll see how it goes. Because yeah. honestly, those fish that are caught, I've been, I've seen these guys that try to release them. They pretty much, these fish have a heart attack. You know, they yeah. fight everything and they're done and it takes 45 minutes to get the revive and they're done. You know what I mean? So I'm not, you know, I obviously I wouldn't be happy with that other than maybe mm -hmm. setting a, <laughs> some type of state record, yeah. but anything like that, man, like I said, I, I do this and you know, I'm fortunate enough where, Hey, you know what I mean? If I only had a few fish today, I'm going next week. And, and you know, I'm, I'm a guy that, again, you know, I have a small family, but um, you know, I only catch what I keep, you know what I mean? So if I know if I'm going fishing within the next couple of days and I have a slammer, I might only keep two or three fish and I'll give them to the other guys that need them because I'm only going to eat those fillets. You know what I mean? So that's just yeah. me. I, you know, everybody, Hey, you pay the money, you know, everything in this economy with inflation and everything like that is yes. ridiculous. People can barely afford to fish right now. I am not Eddie Goodell at times is not telling you what to do with the fish you catch. I'm just saying me personally, like these yeah. fish that are eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 pounds, guys that like Chris saying, these fish are old. These fish that can reproduce, they produce a lot of eggs to sustain the the biomass for future, for your kids, for your grandchildren. And, um, you know, to me, especially if you're having a good day that you have a couple fish in a cooler and you're going to eat and you're fortunate enough to catch a piggy, hey, man, take a couple fish, weigh it, pay a couple hundred bucks to get somebody to do a fish bound, put it on a wall and let this fish swim another day. But that's just Absolutely. my opinion. Don't, don't, you know, don't hold me on uh, the crucible for that. You know, so, I, I agree with you a hundred percent. I mean, yeah. you guys are, are, are able to do whatever you want to do with these fish as long as it stays within the law. hundred percent. Yeah. You know, the, over here, we don't bash anybody for keeping fish, for releasing fish. If that's what you want to do, more power to you. You know, right. that's, that's, that's one of the beauties that we have of freedom of doing what we want as long as it's in the boundaries of the law. And 100%. Man. And, and you got like, that's why, you know, and again, I don't want to get on a whole social thing here, but that's why I'm on yeah. Instagram and not Facebook because, you know, you might have some guy on Facebook that posts a picture of a 14 pound tog that, yeah. you know, he says it's a fish of a lifetime, which of course, to, you know, right now, like I said, the biggest one I caught was 12. That's my yeah. fish of a lifetime. This, you know, this guy keeps it. He might have a hundred comments. Seventy of them are all negative. Oh, you should have let it go. You should have did this. You should have did that. But out of all those seventy comments, not one person has asked, "Hey, do you fish every day? Do you fish every other week?" Maybe this guy, this is his first time black fishing in six years after he got out of a boat, uh, got onto a boat. This was yeah. literally his or maybe only time in his lifetime he's fi he's black fishing, or maybe only fishes once a year, and he caught a fish of a lifetime. And you're gonna and you're gonna put the guy on a cross for that. Like, exactly. On, I know, agree with you. People 100%. don't ask those questions. People assume that when they make those comments that everybody fishes the way they fish. And that's just not factual. Yeah. You know, exactly, man. And, you know, with the, you know, people trying to be bullies and trying to be cool and look tough yeah. and all that stuff. You know what I find amazing? The same guys that you see saying all this stuff on social media would never have the what is the correct word I want to use? fortitude to say that to anybody in their face you know no, what I'm saying? no 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 because if you're fishing next to the guy in the boat oh great fish great fish congratulations and then as soon as they get in their car to put them on social media on blast you know yeah exactly oh, yeah That's i got, I got nothing for you. and listen as long as you're not breaking the law you're catching your fish you're listen you're supporting your local tackle shops you're buying your jigs you're buying your rigs you're buying your sinkers you're supporting your local fishermen by going on the boats if um you know, white crabs aren't available. They have them. You're buying that. You're 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 paying for the fishery, which supports the fuel costs, which supports the mates, which supports uh, you know the ice that goes with it. All the, all the, all the people that are not seen that get paid by that. And you're telling yep. me you can't keep a fish? Like, come yeah. on. you know, you I know that that's. It, it, I, I let that go. That, that's why, like I said, I you know I, it's uh, you know to me it's laughable. Again, you don't get me wrong. You got the guys that abuse it, but that's few and far between. And like you said before, Chris, it's almost like a cult. It's almost like a you know it, it's almost like a, um, a brotherhood and a sisterhood together. That like you know you you catch a fish on these man, it it, it changes you. It changes you in yep. a way that it's like it, it opens you up to so many different things. Where it's like. All right. It almost seems like how much lighter of a rod can I go? How much lighter of a tackle can I go? Like, you know, can I can I use my son's uh, 
um, you, you know, Kmart, <laughs> you know, dollar <laughs> bait caster oh, for freshwater and see if I can get a 10 pounder. You know, it's, it gets, it starts getting stupid, but Hey, yeah. if it keeps the sport going, people keep talking about the sport. People keep, uh, you know, backing it. it it's only good things. Like they said, there's never no, no negative publicity, right? Absolutely, yeah. man. And I'm looking at the clock right now, and I can't believe we we've gone through this 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 yeah. much, you know. But when you talk about black fishing, that time just flies, man. And yeah. you know, I really loved what you taught us about the uh, the jig and the slider hook. I'm definitely gonna try that. That's something that I never even thought about, but I'm definitely gonna try that this season for sure, man. Yeah, but, and, but, and, and Chris, man, I know we got to get going, but one thing too is like for the guys that think that you know the the color doesn't make a difference, and that's fine. Like I said, I personally think from my story that I, I think it does. But if you look at it, that this is a two ounce jig, let's just yeah. say if color doesn't make a difference and you have this slider hook at the end of the day, this is a two ounce weight. Well, look at how free this hook is with a crab on it. You can't yeah. get any more natural than that. So Absolutely. That's, how, that's how we fish, man. And if those fish aren't biting that, they're not there, brother. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with you, man. But before we get going, let everybody know where they can find you and your and your Toggy Time Jigs and let them all know. And I'll leave links in the description down below. Yeah, man, I, I appreciate it. So one thing I didn't say before, Chris, is that me, I, I don't want to say it. I don't want to pat myself on the back that I'm more of a specialty item. But I try to be in at least one tackle shop per town. Um, I don't want to be like these guys that are in every shop. I want to be, hey, if you're in... Uh, you know, uh, Brick Area, go to Gabriel's. You're in Belmar, go to Fisherman's Den. You're in Long Branch, go to Tack Waterman. Um, you know, you're in Hazlitt Area, go to Tackle Box. Like, that's what I want to be with. That That's what I want to do. But there is a lot of guys. I've been getting a lot of orders. PA, uh, New England area, New York, that just my shops aren't up there yet. I mean, I'm at uh, Easy Catch in Staten Island. Uh, there's a couple guys here and there that I obviously always support. But there's a lot of guys that you don't want my jigs that are not in local tackle shops yet. And that's fine. So I always say, go to toggy time Uh, all my jigs are on there. Um, all my jigs are sold in two per pack and, uh, just go from there, man. You can direct message me and say, Hey, listen, you know, this is, um, uh, you know, I saw your, your video for with Chris, um, you know, can you do anything for me? And, you know, I'll make sure to hook you guys up because I really <laughs> appreciate the business guys. And like I said, it's not about money to me. It's about, you know, when I get those pictures and I get those messages of, you know, you catching your first limit ever, or you catching your personal best tog with my jig in yeah. his mouth to me, th th there is no money that could, that could put a price tag on that. So the, the passion is priceless, man. And yeah. Ed, I know you got a very busy schedule, brother. And thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, for I got to get my stuff ready for tomorrow, man. We're going on tag fish charter. So it's just uh, my... I don't know what day it is, but we're going, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother. You have a good night in tight lines. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, brother. Be good, man. Right. Thanks, everybody. Well, that was a good time to sit down and talk to Eddie Godell from Toggy Time Jigs. I mean, he makes a phenomenal product, extremely durable, extremely reliable. And, you know, when I met Eddie a few years ago, I met him through his uncle, uh, which is Joe. He is a fellow member of the High Marsh Striper Club with me. And he gave me a couple packs of these jigs. And I'm not going to lie, I was a little reluctant to use it because black fishing or tog fishing uh, is one of those fish that, it, like I've said many times, it's extremely humbling and it does take some type of skill. And I'm not tooting my own horn at all because I am not the most skillful fisherman in the world. But when you do get comfortable using something, it's kind of hard to switch it up. And especially with something like this because of how good they taste and how hard they are to catch. When you're fishing these fish in structure, I mean, old trusty for me is a snafu rig. You know, like I always say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I have used edge jigs and they work phenomenal. I mean, you do need the proper setup, something with a bit uh, a bit lighter, more fast action, um, but you definitely want to keep that rod still, and, and Eddie brought up good points about the color, and that, that goes against what, you know, a lot of people say, you know, past 40 feet, you don't really see color, but like, a couple of the, the things that he brought up were like, yeah, I had it, I was using this jig, and then nothing was biting, and then I dropped something else, and something else hit it. So, I mean, it does make good points. And if you guys are, are into, you know, working the tactics of getting getting a fish in the boat and doing whatever it takes. I mean, let me tell you something. This guy has hit the nail on the head, like I said earlier, when it comes to matching the hatch. When he comes to this lobster jig, it looks exactly like a lobster. 
the green crab, the structures matching that he does. He does a phenomenal job, guys, and reasonably priced and just great quality of a jig. So get on over to Toggy Time Jigs and check him out. And give him some support. But not only for that, just enjoy the catch. I guarantee you won't be disappointed on the quality of Toggy Time Jigs. But for this week, guys, I am out. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys learned something. So get out there, bend some rods, and I'm out. Tight line. I challenge thee.